Well, welcome to Match Fishing Films, and this is my top five products of the year. Now, these five products, they're not necessarily what I think are the standout products of the year as far as the magazine's concerned or anything like that. These are the five products that I've brought into my fishing that I strongly believe have improved my fishing no end. The products that I use week in, week out, and I just think they're fantastic. There's no like commercial bias or anything like that. They're just the products that I feel have really, really helped my fishing. Number five, Matrix Horizon XS Slim Rods. Now, I've used these rods now for probably 15 months, maybe even a bit longer, maybe 16, 17 months. And they are absolutely fantastic. They're not for everyone. They're a very, 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 very soft rod. Really, really soft, in fact. They're actually aimed at silverfish fishing, you know, skimmers, stuff like that. But I've used them for F1s and all that kind of fishing. But for venues where it's a short chuck, up to sort of 25, 28 meters, the 10 foot 10 inch model in particular is the one that I just think, I wouldn't be without it now to be honest with you. Places like Barston, you know, when you're fishing for skimmers there, I'm recently fishing at Hallcroft, they're just fantastic. They bend through, but just have enough casting power to get you to the mark comfortably. You just feel like you're never gonna lose a fish with these rods, they bend through, absolutely brilliant. A final point on these rods, the tips are fantastic. The Horizon tips, they fit throughout the range. Um, they are the best tips I've used. Um, gonna say it, put it quite bluntly. The reason being the taper on them is fantastic. Um, when you're fishing for silverfish, there are, I, I like the action of the tip to be very much near the end so that your bites are you know, magnified, they're right on the end. None of this slow bend or anything like that. That's fine for carp fishing, but I always think with silvers, you want all the action near the end, nice fast taper, so that you you know your bites are like this um, and the horizon tips absolutely nails it perfectly i have broken a few a few through my own misuse but for me the action on them is perfect so great work there matrix number four milo crept on fluorocarbon um, i was put onto this by lots of angles actually it ties up amazing i was looking for a fluorocarbon um from a feeder fishing actually because i've used fluorocarbon on the pole in the past and uh, Never really been too sure about it to be honest. It's great, don't get me wrong. Um, it, it's strong, it ties well and everything. But yeah, I was heading you know back towards power line to be honest with you for most of my pole fishing. But for feeder work, I wanted to try fluorocarbon just to try and minimise the amount of hook, you know hook length twist and all that kind of stuff that happens. And I've been tipped off that fluorocarbon did that. Now this stuff is the best I've come across. Got to be honest, absolutely brilliant stuff ties up beautifully it's so smooth it's silky smooth you never seem to get any damage when you're tying hooks or tying knots in it the accurate the uh, diameters are accurate it's just really really good it's really strong as well i used it in 0169 at bow beach in the feeder masters final which i found was a, a great line and i've been recently been using it in, you know down to 011 at holcroft with small hooks 18 hooks and stuff like that and it's just been fantastic it's not let me down yet there is a drawback to it, it's 10 quid a spool and you only get 50 metres, so it is expensive, but at the end of the day, 10 quid, that last little bit of line is so important to catching fish and I, I'd rather spend 10 quid on a, on a proper spool of line than you know, spending an extra 10 quid on a pole or whatever, so get some of that, give it a try, let me know in the comments below what you think to it, expensive, but the best. Number three, now this is a product that I didn't think I would use and that is the Guru Exchange Feeders. Now, when I first saw them, I thought the sizes were all wrong, I thought they were too chunky, I thought, I just didn't see a place for them in my fishing, but I was wrong, I was wrong, they're, they're absolutely brilliant. Um, the only one I've used so far, and the only one that I feel the need to use is the, the small version, funny enough. Not the new two hole diddy one, but the three hole one. By the time you've got the lead on the bottom, you know, up to 50 gram I've been using them at Bow Beach. You can get so much bait in them because they're wide. But what I like about them, because they're a plastic cage, you can give the bait a really firm squeeze and it's, you know it's getting to the bottom, but you still have the benefits of the cages in. You know, the fish can see the bait, the bait leaches out a little bit as it falls through the water. I'll always use a cage. With wire cages, which I normally like to use, obviously as you're squeezing them, the bait can spill out the side and it's, it's, it can be tough to get that compression. But the Guru Exchange, you can load them so nicely and, uh, and they've, they've, they've really, really impressed me. And like I say, I didn't initially think they would be part of my armory, but they now have become. Number two, Preston Innovations Absolute 36. Now I've got the black edition. Um, I didn't go for the carbon. Um, I think the carbon's a great box, but for me, the black edition, absolutely fantastic. Um, 
it took a lot to, for me to swap to this box. I've got to be honest, because I was an um, absolute compact user. And I've spoken many times in the magazine um, about why you used to choose that box. And it suited me down to the ground. But when it came around to this year, I knew I was going to be fishing a lot more wilder venues where I'd have to get in the water a lot and all that kind of stuff. I knew I had to get the station type box. The Absolute 36 was my choice. I thought the price was good. I really liked the, the trays. Obviously, I had the trays from the compact anyway, but the, the, the new ones are improved. They've got the maglock system on there, which is, is a massive improvement on the old one. I did break a few clips on the old one, not gonna lie, but the new one, I have not had any problems whatsoever. One complaint that a lot of people have had is the foot plate. Everyone thinks that the foot plate's a bit too small. Now, that's not a complaint I've had at all, to be honest with you. I've got size nine feet, so they're not the biggest feet in the world, and it, I'm very, very comfortable on that box. I could see if you had massive feet, your feet might go over the little raised bar at the front. It may be a problem, but I've not seen, you know, there's loads of room on there for me. So just bear that in mind. You know, sit on one first before buying one. It might be too short for you, but you'd have to have big feet <laughs> um, but the box has been fantastic absolutely faultless I've fished with this so many times without a platform in the water so jacking my legs up to the maximum um, using the inners rather than you know extending the 36 mil legs and it's got a 30 mil inner um, and it's so solid you can fish off it no problem one match in particular really stands out was on the tidal trend I wanted to get out as far as I can obviously the tide was out and I set, out, I set out a bit too far to be honest with you and I jacked the box up as high as I can without putting a platform in. Um, I'll put a picture on the screen and it was so solid. I was standing up to cast and everything. I fished off it all day. The flow came in, bashed me around like it does there with the speed boats flying past and the box never moved an inch. Um, it's the best box I've ever used. I've got to be honest. I've not had any of the modern reeds or anything like that. I've not had an ox box to sit on or anything but for me personally, that box, the combination of the price, the features, you know, the accessories, I just think it is, it's bang on um, and it looks the part as well. So great product that um, and I have not, touch wood, had anything go wrong with it yet. The fun wheels are all great, the drawers are great, everything's bang on, can't fault it and I look forward to years more great service from that. Now number one, it has to be the Daiwa Tournament SLR rods. Now I was and I still am a massive fan of Browning's Black Viper rods. Um, loads of people have asked me about them and why I've changed. Um, the Black Vipers a rod uh, hold very close to my heart. I won the first in festival earlier in the year on them. And I've just, uh, you know, brilliant rods. For the money, I, I think they're fantastic. You, know, you can pick them up for, I think, as little as 150 quid now in some stores. Um, and for that money, if you're an occasional distance feeder angler, they are brilliant. However, on one session I went out with Steve Ringer to our local Hollowell Reservoir where we do a lot of videos and a lot of content and we were both sitting in a really really strong wind and I'm fishing my 13 foot S uh, Black Viper rods and he's fishing his uh, 12 foot SLRs. Anyway and we're both fishing 60 meters we purposely sat in the wind just to make you know make it hard and practice our casting and make sure our rigs weren't tangling and all that kind of stuff and I was hitting them at that with no problem whatsoever but I was having to give it my all. Anyway, I went up and had to go on Steve's gear because I thought, well, you know, why not? And uh, he wanted to have a tea and all that sort of stuff. So I'm fishing away and I am and uh, I couldn't believe how much easier it was to cast that mark with his rod. You know, the, the conditions were as bad as it gets, but it made it so easy. And it was at that point when I, I realized just how special the SLRs are. And that, like I said, that is not saying the Black Vipers are a bad rod, it's more a testament to how good the SLRs are because the Vipers have got such casting power um, and these just, you know, just take it to another level. Um, I was first shown these up in Scotland at Daiwa Factory um, last year. We were the first of the press to see it. And I finally took the plunge earlier this year and I'm so glad I did. Accuracy when casting with these rods is just phenomenal. Um, Daiwa rods, are always, they always cast very straight and true. Um, but these ones just they're just fantastic I've gone for the 12 foot and the 13 foot rods um, and to be honest with you if I was to have my time again I would probably just go for the 13s the reason is the 13s are a little bit little bit softer I'd suggest um, I find them easier to work with I think they have a better playing a fish playing action the 12 foots are absolutely great and I know Steve loves his 12s and uses them just about all the time 
but for me, I found the 13 foots fit that suit me better. I can hit marks so easily with them rods. And like I say, because they're three piece, they just seem a little bit softer to me. Maybe that's just because I've used them a lot more and I sort of settled into a routine of just setting up the 13s, to be honest with you. But if I had my time again, like I say, I'd probably go for four 13 footers rather than two 12s and two 13s. I'm not bothered with the 11 foot. Um, I think that's a really specialist item of kit, to be honest with you. If you just went to Barston, um, maybe Larford, places like that, then the 11 foot is the, the rod for you. But because I do a bit of everything and a lot of natural water fishing, the 13 foot is the one for me. Uh, have I had any issues with my, my SLRs? No, but the tips, I have broke a few tips, and common theme here, broke tips on both of the rods I've mentioned. Um, but the, the uh, ounce and a half in particular, I have broke a few of them. Doing silly things as well, like chucking out, going to sink my line and they're actually breaking on the surface and things like that. User error, yes, but I just think, you know, they could be a little bit stronger. Um, whether the eye spacing needs addressing. I know that they, they might be working on something, so no doubt they'll be getting that right. But to be honest with you, I've used the two ounce and the three ounce tips all summer long at Bow Beach and, and at my local reservoir. And once I've got used to it, I've not had any problems at all. The only other time I've broken is actually in my ready rod bag, when you fold the rod down and it just at the end when you round the rig too tight. But other than that, I cannot fault these rods at all. They are expensive, of course they're expensive. But you know when you spend money with Dioa, that rod is going to last you for years and years and years and years. I've still got some Dioa rods that I was given when I was a kid, and they're still good to this day. Old amorphous whiskers and stuff like that. And you just not, the build quality on them is second to none. So there it is, my top five products of the year. Products that, I've, that have helped my fishing. Comment below, make sure you, you know, give us some feedback, see what you think. Have you used any of these products? What do you think? Were they right for you? They might not have been right for you, but let us know. You know, the more feedback the better. While you're here, don't forget to click the subscribe button. You know, it's free to do so. It doesn't cost you anything at all. And it just makes sure that you don't miss another video from us. Um, the, video, the videos are coming thick and fast now, so you don't want to miss out on them. It gives you something to watch in the evenings and plenty of fishing content from great anglers like Steve Ringer, Dead Ship, people like that who I'm out on the bank with all the time. So thanks for watching, everyone, and we'll see you soon.